welcome to Weekend Extra. My name is Hannah. I'm here with the Bogue Man, and <laughs> we are super excited because this is a special Weekend Extra because it's Easter. The Easter edition. Yes. So happy Easter. And Jeff, as an Easter present, I actually brought you a little chocolate bunny. Oh, that's really, really <laughs> Just to sweet. warm you up that's before our interview. Fantastic. Well, yes. thank you. Happy Easter. Because Easter's all about chocolate and bunnies. Yes. You heard it here first at Grace Church. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jeff loved just hearing your sermon, hearing and remembering this sweet part of the story of the gospel, all yeah. being here in the resurrection. What a sweet reminder. And as I was sitting there, I could just like see your passion. Like it pours out of you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there and I'm feeling this just re-stir and excitement around the resurrection and the Easter story. But I imagine in a room this big, there were some people listening to this today thinking like, okay. I've heard this before. Yeah. Like, he's going to give an Easter sermon. Off I go to go eat some ham. Uh, let's say that they're listening to this conversation throughout the week. What would you say to those individuals as just an encouragement to really relive the importance of this and not just brush over it? Yeah, I think that's a great question because it, it especially if you were raised in the church or in some kind of a religious setting, it, it is a, a thing that's so familiar you know, God loves you so much, he died on the cross for you. And we kind of think of it like the way I just said it, you know, kind of with that blasé attitude. And uh, I th I think what you have to do is you, you have to delve into the story and you have to um, almost relive it and revisualize it. So Paul says something interesting in Philippians. He says, I want to know the power of the resurrection and I want to share in the joy of your suffering. And so anything that you can do that will get your heart and your mind kind of there, that this is what a God, our God, Jesus did for us because he loved us. So uh, for some people, um, it's visual, visualizing it, right? So I, I actually think that the passion of the Christ was a gift from God to our world. And I know for me, when, when I watch that story— uh, I watched it again last night. That's such a good idea. Yeah. I didn't even have that on my radar as something you'd give as an answer, I, but I, to see it. We watch that. Uh, we watch it sometimes as a family, but, you know, um, I'll watch it, and I want to see it. I'm a visual person, so I want to see it, and I can. It, it makes sense to me, and it grabs me, and it moves me, right? So it, caught, it keeps it from just being, I'm so familiar with it, like it just keeps it from being that way and it personalizes it for me. Um, another big thing is communion. So that's what communion is for. It's to re-visualize and re-experience the, the death of Christ. Uh, and then another thing is to um, put yourself in a place of suffering. So my wife Heidi is like this, you know, she's a CrossFitter uh, kind of famously. And we have a we have a friend uh, named Bobby who is extremely good as an athlete, and he he says when I am pushing myself, I am thinking about the suffering of Christ. Like in his mind, he's like I am putting my body in a place of pain and suffering, like Christ did, and it causes him to connect to Jesus. So all those things are kind of personal, and you may even have your own thing. It's a song or it's a memory or those kind of things. But I want to take the Scripture. I'm not talking about like inventing something. I want to take the Scripture, and I want to make myself go there. And when I go to the depths of Christ's suffering, I wind up at the depths of Christ's love, and then I need to personalize that. Like that was for me. If we believe that Jesus created us— and predestined us, so he knew we were going to show up, then we believe that he died for, for us personally. And so th that's how I do it. You know, I, there may be other things, but I, I actually try to find a way, and, and I find something physical or visual like that that I just translate spiritually. And because I want to I want to share in the power of the resurrection. I want to share in the joy of the suffering of the Lord. And there, that, that passage means a whole lot more than what I'm talking about right now. But as an answer to your question, it's a way to pursue yeah, that. Yeah, that's so, so helpful. I had a conversation with a friend this week who said to me, I just feel like I am not as excited about Easter as I need to be. So friends, I hope you can take some of those recommendations. And don't be afraid to admit that out loud to your friends, to your life group, and start working through those things. 
Um, Jeff, my second question for you, let's say, you know, you're walking out of the sermon and I love how you've really helped us to refocus on the importance of this, of the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that it does is it kind of re-energizes us to talk to people about Jesus because we hear the sermon and we're like, oh yeah, this was a game changer. Yeah. This is a really big deal. Um, what advice would you have for some of our friends who are walking out of the sermon jazz to talk I need to bring this up more at work. I need to talk to people more about the resurrection this week of Easter. Um, any starting points for those friends? Yeah, I, I would say, first of all, get to know that person, right? So I am not a proponent of like cold turkey evangelism. I think it's weird and creepy, and I don't like it when it happens to and me. And that's coming from the pastor, yeah, so, that's, so that's good advice. <laughs> every, everything starts with a relationship. And then here at Grace, we always say, pray for the no-brainer moment. So I would say with your friend or the person on the plane or your, you know, your family member, ask God to prepare their heart to have the conversation. And then that's what Peter says. He says, be prepared to give a reason for the hope that's within you. So I'm, a, I'm asking God to spark in them a desire to see the hope, then I answer the question, right? So I, I actually wouldn't, like, show up at the Easter egg hunt and say, these eggs, this is, you know, pagan, <laughs> throw it on the ground. And, you know, you should be thinking about the resurrection. I, I would just look and say, yeah, Easter sparks a conversation about religion. Everybody knows that it's a religious thing. Ask God to open a door and then step through it with gentleness and respect, but boldly. Mm, that's so helpful. Thanks, Jeff. I really loved hearing how you talked about your aha moment, your soccer field moment. Mm -hmm. And you tell this story, and I wrote down a few of the things that you kind of compared and contrasted in your head of saying, either I have to invest completely in myself, or if this gospel, if this story of Jesus is actually true, part of my life is to invest in others. Uh, you said either it relies all on me and my power or there's this greater higher power. And you kind of went through this list and as I was sitting there listening, I was thinking, man, how many people this weekend at Grace yeah. had that soccer field moment? Yeah. You know, how many people in, invited a friend or heard you teaching on this and it really helped them understand the gospel in a brand new way? Mm -hmm. Uh, to those friends who are walking away from the sermon with their soccer field moment, uh, praise God, first of all. Mm -hmm. uh, second of all, what wisdom or advice or just encouragement would you give those, um, those new people at Grace who are so excited and getting this? For the first time. Yeah, I, I guess like you, I hope that that happened, and I, I hope that God's working in their heart that way. And I would say um, probably the biggest thing you need to do or I would encourage you to do is tell somebody. You know, So let somebody in your life know who you know loves and follows Jesus, and uh, let them know the decision that you made, and then uh, enter into some conversations about that. So the Bible says this, that if you had that moment where you put your life under the definition and direction of Jesus, Jesus uses this term. He says you're born again, which means you're an infant, right? You're a little baby, and that's spiritually. So that's great, but that also means that you need some support and some help with it. So letting us know here at Grace or letting a life group leader know or a friend know so that we can begin to like come around you and just talk about like what that means, what do you do next, how do you start to interact with the Bible. It's a blast. It's a, it's a fun process, um, but it, it's something that you actually don't do on your own. Christianity is a team sport. It's not an individual thing. And so uh, the Bible sets it up like that. So when you become a Christian, you begin to involve other people in your life, and that's the first thing I'd encourage you to do. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jeff. Hopefully that's a story for many people this weekend that they really got to hear this message and say, wow, the resurrection is a big deal and a lifesaver. So thanks for joining us, friends, on this weekend extra. Happy Easter. We'll see you next week. <music>